Check this out. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna use this for real to actually sync my sound and my video, I guess. I use my hands normally, just a little, well, I can't do it as I'm holding this, but a little clap. I'm just gonna, there we go. Let's talk about sunsets. Let's talk about photographing sunsets. It's Tutorial Tuesday. Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where every week, every Tuesday, you get a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. Now this week, we're gonna be talking about photographing sunsets. So different tips for doing that. I've got five tips for maximizing your sunset shoots. We're gonna be focusing primarily on landscape photography during sunset, but of course, if you like it, we can always do a part two where we talk about portrait photography during sunset, because that can look awesome as well. I think natural light, sunset, portrait shoots. Ooh! But this week we're focusing mostly on landscape. Now sunset's my favourite time to shoot. I think the light looks beautiful. It's nice and soft. Oh, it just looks good. The tones in the sky, all of that stuff is awesome. And it just gives landscapes this really nice look. You know, shooting into the sun, shooting away from the sun, all kinds of stuff. It just looks really, really nice. Now I was going to shoot this out in the sun. I was actually going to shoot it around sunset, but it's just raining. It's just raining all the time. And that's a shame. So we're gonna shoot it in here instead. Now, we're coming towards the end of summer, so you can still get those awesome, awesome sunsets that look so good, but you don't have to wait till sort of nine, half nine to do it. You know, they're more around sort of seven, half seven at the moment, which is much, much more reasonable. So let's dive in. Let's dive in to the five tips for photographing sunset. Tip number one, and this is to scout out your location, to plan things out a little bit. I know it's a little bit boring. I know this one's a little bit boring but I find that it helps so much. Now, there's apps that you can get which tell you where the sun's gonna set because it changes throughout the year. You know, in the height of summer, the sun sets in a very different place to where it sets at the height of winter. And I think it's really important to know exactly where it's gonna set because that means that you're gonna know how to compose your photograph when you're, when you're out taking photos uh, in different landscapes. So I think scouting out locations and planning that is super, super important. Now when I say scouting out locations as well, I have had a location in mind before, and then I've gone in basically blind, I've not scouted out at all beforehand, and I've realized once I'm there that actually there's a big hill that blocks the sun out way before sunset, and so it just it doesn't look how I imagined it would look. So it's worth scouting things out like that, at least looking into, you know, are you gonna have any problems with the sun being blocked by some big hill, you know, or big building, or something like that. Are you gonna be able to get the shot you wanna get? Is the sun gonna be setting in the right place? Stuff like that. And I think it's kind of worth looking around these landscapes in the day, you know, getting an idea of the kind of composition you might wanna go for, checking out where the sun's gonna be setting, and then sometimes it's a matter of luck, especially in the UK with clouds. Oh, sometimes, sometimes it's just it's just luck of the draw. You'll get you'll get a lovely day, but just when it's coming up to sunset, you've got low hanging cloud. I don't know if anyone out there has ever had this. I've been waiting for sunset all day. Oh, and it's going to be perfect. And then there's a cloud that sits kind of just above the horizon and just takes it out, just takes it out of the equation. Oh, I hate that when that happens. But if you plan ahead, you can you can get a day, you know, check the weather, you can get a day when you are gonna get the shot that you want. And if you know ahead of time the uh, the situation, you know, where you wanna go, the location, where the sun's gonna set, all that sort of stuff, it's just gonna help you out. Because once you're there, the sun can set so fast and you really are on the clock, you know? Part of being prepared, part of tip one is also just getting there earlier than you think you need to. You know, if the sun's gonna set at half seven, I like to get there at kind of quarter to seven at the latest, you know, 6.45, that's gonna give me 45 minutes before the sun is down. And I can get loads of good photos in that time. I can play around composition, play around settings, and all that kind of stuff. If I give myself an hour, I've got that whole golden hour to kind of play around and, and find the shot that I wanna get. Whereas if I rock up, you know, 10, 15 minutes before the sun is gonna set, which I have done, you know, I won't lie, I have done that. It's just, you're just putting a limit on yourself. You know, you're just, you're just making it harder for yourself for no reason. So it's worth getting there, ooh, nice and early. So tip number two is to play around with your settings. Now, there's lots to this. Now, I'll normally take a tripod 
and I'll normally set up so I can so I can have a bit more versatility with things like shutter speed and ISO and stuff like that. I like to play around with, with shutter speed as much as possible without having to boost that ISO too much because I want to keep it a nice clean image and having a tripod allows me to do that it means i don't have to have to worry about camera shake now that said i have been shooting a bit of handheld recently as well and you can absolutely do that especially with a lot of cameras now with uh, with very good image stabilization so for example the sony a7 III, the panasonic lumix s1 these have such good image stabilization in the camera they're even shooting really slow shutter speeds it, it doesn't matter too much you can definitely get you can definitely get really good shots even at slower shutter speeds. Now it's worth playing around with that exposure level quite a bit because you've got quite a contrasty situation. You've got a really bright sky with the sun, especially if you're shooting into the sun. You've got a really bright sky, you've got a darker foreground. You know, I like to keep my aperture pretty constant, so usually it'll be around f11 or f8, depending on what I'm going for, but usually it'll be about f11, and then I'll just, I'll change the shutter speed, you know, until I get an exposure that I'm happy with. Now, a lot of the time, I'll actually bracket my sunset shots as well, because it just gives you more options later. Now, if you're not familiar with bracketing, we actually have a video out all about bracketing your exposure, but essentially it's taking multiple shots with different exposures and then blending them together later on the computer. And it's a really great way of managing to keep details in different areas because you can expose for the sky with a with a with a darker exposure, and then you can expose for the for the darker ground with a much brighter exposure, and then you can blend them together uh, and create a, a really well exposed shot. Now, of course, you can go over the top of this; you can get a crazy HDR looking thing. But if you do it properly, it can look really really good. Something else is going to help, and this is an absolute must. And I imagine most of us probably do it, but it's shooting in RAW. You know, especially if you're shooting something like this, shooting in RAW is going to allow you to, to really bring back a lot of those highlights, really boost those shadows if you want to. You've just got so much more room to play around with things after the fact. Uh, and that goes for white balance as well. You know, it can be it can be easy to overlook that and just leave it on auto. I do it. You know, I, I leave it on auto a lot. But sometimes your camera will try and try and get rid of these crazy warm tones or things like that. Whereas if you if you have left an auto and you've shot in RAW, you can just go in and change things later. It doesn't really matter that much at all. But it is also worth sometimes maybe playing around with that white balance. You know, seeing what kinds of shots you can get. So just have a play with the exposures. And if you if you do tip one and you get there nice and early, you've got the time to play around with this stuff. You know, and it, it, you can come away with some really nice creative shots. Now, tip number three is to change up your perspectives. So a lot of the time I will shoot a nice wide landscape 24 mil, something like that, and it'll be into the sun. You know, I'll have the sun off to the one side and I'll have a nice landscape and it'll be nice and wide. And that usually is awesome. That can look so, so good, but it's worth playing around with different perspectives. So what I mean by that is turn around. You know, the sunset is off in one direction, but sometimes maybe off to the side can look amazing because you've got really side lit features to a landscape and it can really create a sense of depth and these colors and it can be incredible and behind you as well you know where the sun the sunset is actually shining onto a landscape as well that can look so good and it's often really overlooked you know sometimes when i go to spots where you know it's going to be great for sunset you'll see a lot of photographers set up a tripod and stuff pointing all towards the sun and you know you turn around and there's amazing landscape there you know, no one's focusing on because the sun is off the other way. And it, yes, it's lovely to shoot into the sun and it can look so cool, but also turn around, look at other bits of the, of the landscape. That can look easily as good. Now, similarly, I often shoot wide. I'll usually go 24 mil, something like that. But sometimes you can focus in on one individual part of the landscape. Sometimes that can look really awesome. And you know, you can go 50 mil, 70 mil, 200 mil, anything, and just focus in on one particular part. Zooming in like that as well is going to give you incredible compression and make the sun look huge. So that's a really interesting way to be creative with your sunset shots and get some different stuff as opposed to just wide landscapes. You know, yeah, wide landscapes, absolutely, 100%. They're my favorite, to be honest. They are my favorite of the sunset shots, but zooming in and stuff can create some really spectacular images as well. Now, tip number four is all about composition. Now, an easy way to do this is to think about the rule of thirds, and that's where you're dividing your photo into your little grid with your with your four lines essentially so you've got two coming down and two going across you want to place the sun on on really one of the lines right or left or maybe in one of the kind of grid corners that's going to really help you kind of compose your photo have the horizon either on the line above or below the kind of middle of the photo that's just going to lead to a nicer shot now the rule of thirds is a really easy and simple way to just instantly improve your landscape photos you know, it is quite simple, and it is quite quite kind of straightforward, 
but there's nothing wrong with that at all and that's a really easy way to do it i think layering your landscape can look really good so for example having some kind of foreground interest a middle ground and then a right in the back probably have your sunset right at the back but for example if you have rocks in the foreground you have cliffs as your middle ground and then sunset right at the back with some clouds that can look great uh, or perhaps it'll be sea at the front you know, and then and then some hills and stuff in the middle, and then right in the back you got sunset with cliffs and stuff like that. Layering your landscapes like that really, really helps with the composition. It gives visual interest throughout the photo. Leading lines, that's lines that kind of draw you in and through the photo. They are a massive deal as well. They can they can make a photo just stand out and pop and draw the viewer's eye in. So all of these things are worth thinking about. You know, it can be really easy to get overexcited about the sun and really focus in on that, but there's the sunset itself is really just accentuating whatever awesome landscape is there and it's worth remembering that the sunset itself isn't enough to make this a perfect photo you, know, you still have to compose the landscape in a creative way you know in a, in, a, in a way that shows it off as best you can and finally tip number five is to add people to your photos now this is going to create a visual interest you know something else other than just the landscape you can add a sense of scale you know i always recommend this to people with landscape photography people in it can uh, create a sense of scale so maybe you've got someone looking out onto the landscape maybe you've got someone taking a photo maybe you've got someone standing down there i don't know anything like that adding a person to it creates a sense of scale a visual interest to the photo it can kind of create this strange kind of feeling of like interaction where you've got someone there it makes it more personal and kind of brings you into the photo in a different way you know it, it makes it less of just a oh a lovely landscape and more of a personal lovely landscape there's a person there i think that adds so much to the photo in so many different ways that it's worth experimenting with and if you've got enough time again tip number one if you get there nice and early you can play around you now have a lovely landscape and then get someone to just sit on a rock looking out at it. You know, get someone to go and stand with a camera to take a photo of it. You know, in different positions and kind of switch things up a bit, you know. I've even taken photos at sunset with, and it's not of the sunset at all, just of someone taking a photo of the sunset, kind of photoception. And I've come out feeling happier about that photo than any of the sunset photos I got. So it's worth, it's worth playing around with having someone in the frame. So there are five top tips for photographing the sunset. Of course, there's thousands of different things you can do. And photography is, of course, a subjective matter anyway. So I'd love to hear any tips you have. Pop them down in the comments below. I feel like I'm a little bit ahead of the game with my hand movements, you know? I'm pointing down there before I've even said comments down below. But pop down in the comments below any tips you might have for sunset photography. I'd love to hear them because it's my favorite my favorite thing to photograph and uh, you know I could always use some tips as well so regardless of the fact that it would be cool to to have them down there I could always use the tips so pop them down in the comments I'd love to hear them if you like the video make sure to give it a thumbs up that always helps us out make sure to subscribe as well for new tutorials reviews who through about Thursday we've got all kinds of stuff going on worth subscribing I reckon it costs nothing and yet you get so much so I reckon 100% worth it. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching. I don't think there's any outtakes this week. You know, there's been a few videos lately where I've not had any. I've got to say, this has probably been the most efficient Tutorial Tuesday I've ever, ever filmed. I just basically, five minutes, wrote out what my tips would be, uh, very loosely. And I've come and I've sat down and I've just filmed it in one take, pretty much. You know, stumbled over a couple of words. But, yeah. Stars, no doubt, thanks. Nothing. Uh, thanks for watching, you know. Thank you for watching.